<laughs> okay, we're back. Neil, are we live? Yep. Every to another great off the radio show. Today, we are in our outside studio here in oh, beautiful okay. Pleasure Point. Yes. Uh, we have the Honorable <laughs> Jimmy Panetta, our congressman, is back. Of course. I don't course. know... How come? Because we're such losers. But it's great to yeah. have you back. Trust me, I'd, yeah. I'd rather be here, especially here in Rich's house, well, uh, yes. enjoying this view with you guys than a lot of other places. So this is outstanding. Thank you. Well, and now I do pleasure. thank Richard as well for allowing us to uh, Thanks, check, Rich. check the surf while we, while we and, chat. And he's going to charge us for the water, too. Yeah, well, we'll get a bill. <laughs> <laughs> the bill's coming. Uh, first off, and welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks. I know you're busy. Yeah, I appreciate it. No, good to be here. Like I said, I got in uh, the other night here, and then I uh, celebrate Mother's Day tomorrow, what you, what you, of course. What you, what Happy you, Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. What are you getting Sylvia for Mother's Day? I'm getting Sylvia. Oh, we're getting her. Well, you know what? We always get her what do you want pictures dinner? of the grandkids. You do? <laughs> pictures <laughs> of the grandkids. For somebody that who has always every <laughs> That's the <laughs> thing. Yeah. That's the problem. My yeah. mom and dad are so difficult to shop for. You, the best thing we can come up with is just... Sure the kids. I could imagine you're at the house, you, like you open every cabinet, it's just full of stuff. <laughs> right? Is that it? Dude, you've been to my parents' house. <laughs> no, I can just exactly. imagine. Exactly, you know, you are correct. Well, so, you are correct. photos house go up good. on the refrigerator, yeah. they're new. Exactly, updated. exactly. So that's the best thing, especially with uh, our daughter going off to college next year, uh, the senior, and still got the junior around. So. And where's she going? Oh, uh, back east. Back, back east? east? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Well, congrats to yeah, that. Sad, you. a little bit. But you're back east all yeah. the time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So make it a little bit easier to see. She'll, she'll, fly, back, she'll fly back and forth? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll all be yeah. flying back and forth. I fly back and forth. She'll be flying back and forth. My wife will be coming back there more to see her, I'm sure. So it's good. Well, congratulations to that. Thank you. Is that a, uh, is that a required thing for your children college? Dude, we, I went to NPC. <laughs> I mean, I went to, like, we're, I, like I told them, I said, you, you know, you can go to NPC. You're fine. I mean, I, my two older brothers, we went to community college for two years. Growing up, you know, growing up, high school, we were, and you guys know, you know, we're 70s, 80s kids. We, we, our parents allowed us to do whatever we wanted. As long as we didn't get brought home by the police, right. we were okay. Yeah. Although that happened once or twice, we still basically, you know, kind of did whatever we wanted. Fortunately, we found athletics. And so we played sports in high school, didn't necessarily focus in the, on the classroom, focused on the gym and the field. And that's why we all went to community college. But I can tell you, my brothers would say the same thing. If it wasn't for MPC, we wouldn't be where we're at right now. Right. I got one brother who's a cardiologist. Cardiologist. The other brother is a, a, a partner at a law firm. Uh, you know, I'm a, 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 a was an attorney. Now I'm a, a federal representative. I'm telling you, if it wasn't for that time at MPC at the community college, where we, we were able to kind of pivot from athletics to academics, work full time. They went to Berkeley. I went to UC Davis. We both, we all had to pay our way through college because, you know, with our parents, it was like, you got to go to school, but you're going to pay for it yourself. Mm -hmm. So right. we just did that, and they, you know, fortunately gave us a good foundation. What was the more Simpsons? You know? So you come home, a cop's got you by the ear. <laughs> it wasn't and, good. But, yeah, it like, wasn't but, good. Trust I mean, me. Your dad me. seems tough. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. The, the thing is, is that, you know, because my mom was the one here in the district. My dad was traveling back and forth. So the last thing he wanted my mom to do was tell my dad oh, what we did. So that once you knew, like when she said, I'm calling your dad, you're screwed. Oh, yeah. Then you were done. But uh, yeah, no, I, we, we all went through it. You Those know? negotiations with your mom must have been amazing. <laughs> exactly. You know, like, exactly. you're just like, mom! Exactly, exactly. No, 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 Don't please, please. Yeah, no, no, no. But look, it all, like prepared you said, for your job today. Completely. You know, Lots of negotiations. negotiations right now. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, that's all right. We can continue to talk about, you know, my delinquentism when I was a kid. Let's start with your nose, It's the debt ceiling. Mm. Oh, here we go. Yeah, talk about negotiations, man. What is uh, happening? Yeah, What's look, that, that's the question. And I, but I think it's it's clear, though, that we have to raise the debt ceiling. Let's, like, lay that out there. we got to raise the debt ceiling. Why? If we don't... We obviously got a sense of what happened back in 2011, but what Moody's Analytical and Mark Zandi saying is that if we don't raise the debt ceiling, you're going to see a 4% hit to our GDP. You're going to see basically a 6%, 6 million jobs lost. You're going to see 9% unemployment, and our stock market's going to take a hit. We're going to lose 15 trillion with a T, 15 trillion to our economy. So we got to raise the debt ceiling. Now, at the same time, I get it. The Republicans want to make sure that we cut spending back, or at least take some steps to balance our deficit, balance our debt. And I'm for that. 
And I think first we've got to start off by raising debt ceiling, but let's also have negotiations. And look, we've got to have negotiations. Elections have consequences. Right now, the Republicans are in charge of the House, Democrats in charge of the Senate, the Democrat is in the White House. If we don't have the Speaker of the House on board, we're going to be stuck. Now, it's unfortunate that he's kind of playing Russian roulette with the debt ceiling in order to get some of these negotiations going. But that's where we're at, so we should have these talks. Now, How can you your negotiation with some holding the gun to head? He's got with well, the gun. I mean, he's holding the gun to everybody's head okay. at this point. That's the problem, and that's what he, he shouldn't do, and that's why you got to start off by raising that debt ceiling. But then at the same time, sure, we can have discussions on short-term fixes, right. but also let's start talking about long-term fixes. Um, yes, you know, look, we, 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 our, our debt has risen tremendously under the ex-president. It rose under this president, but it had to based on the spending we had to do to get us out of COVID and the industrial policy that has been put in place with the Chips and Science Act, with the Infrastructure Bill, and the Inflation Reduction Act. Basically, the largest investment in reducing our carbon output in human history, which I voted for all three of those, and I do it again, because it's very important that that's the pivot that we have to take. Now, at this point, though, we got to talk about you know how we can look at everything needs to be on the table in regards to reducing our debt and deficit. What I mean by that, of course we can look at ways to cut back on wasteful spending. There's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, we damn well better talk about revenue. Where's that revenue going to come from? How are we going to raise that money? And basically, who can we look at? What corporations and what uh, high income earners can we look at to pay basically what they need to in order to bring in that source of revenue? Right. But these, you at least got to have these discussions. Okay. And unfortunately, these discussions haven't been had. Why? Because interest rates on money, on loans, have been so low. But now that they're, it's so high based on where we're at on the economy and what the Fed's doing with the interest rates, we're going to be spending more on the payback of our debt than we are on our military budget come in the next few years. And that can't happen. I feel like there's not the discussion of, we spent this money. we got to raise the debt ceiling to cover what we've written checks for. Of right? course. Of That's course. how it works. Of course. Of course. If you don't do that, you're playing basically, like I said, Russian roulette with not only our credit worthiness, but our credit. I mean, America and the U.S. dollar is the most significant financial institution in the world. People rely on us. And if we don't pay our bills, then that's a problem. And that's a problem for us and the problem for the world. And that's what we don't want to happen. So like I said, first and foremost, we got to raise that debt ceiling. But sure, let's have conversations about how we can be a little bit more fiscally responsible. In your daily dealings, has the discussion of a flat tax ever come up? Yeah, it you know, does, it does, but the problem with the flat tax is it's a little regressive and that it hits everybody, and that can be a problem. It's going to hit low-income earners a lot harder than those that earn a lot more, and so that's where you got to be uh, very careful with the flat tax. I know it sounds good, everybody kind of gets right. taxed, but the fact is, is that when you look at it proportionate to what people make, it's going to hurt low-income earners a lot more. Well, maybe a lot it could be a scale. High, high maybe it's numbers. like, I've, I've heard numbers of even as low as 7%, I think, sometimes. But So maybe it's a, a 6, 7, 8, 9 or something percent based on. But I just feel like that could be a solution. But look, I, I think there are a lot of solutions out there. But the problem is, is that if you have this attitude of, you know, don't touch non-discretionary funding, no revenues at all, you're stuck. You're stuck. If you say basically we're not going to cut things or if you say we're not going to have revenues, then where are you going to go? And so let's at least be adults and put this all on the table. I'm proud to say I'm part of a group in Congress that is Democrats and Republicans. We actually met on Thursday that is actually starting to talk about this. Wow. And so we met for the first time and we're going to basically kind of start laying out there certain base hits we can take. Like how to shore up our Social Security, make sure that trust fund is solvent. Because right now, the current predictions are it's going to be insolvent by 20, 2033. And therefore, they're going to be paying out a lot less if that happens. We don't want to do that. How do we make it solvent? I don't know. Let's think of ways to maybe those who, you know, don't need their Social Security box, can their Social Security income, can maybe check a box and say, I don't need it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I make enough right now or I have enough in my savings or I don't need it. And they can check that box, something like that. Just ideas out there. But this is what happens when you at least take the time to talk. You know, like the negotiation right. pushing it down the road to the next guy? Is it, is it, oh, trust me. We kick the can down the road. Right? It happens all the time. Right. You bet. You bet. That's kind of where we're at right now. Right. But like I said, because of these high interest rates that we're dealing with, 
um, you know, because the Fed put us there. We're paying a lot more for money than we have in the last few decades, mm -hmm. and this is the problem. Okay. Those right. negotiations that I feel like it's like the Bloods and Crips trying to talk to each other. Like, if you look across the aisle and it's like, you know, it's like, <laughs> no, nah, man, no, it's you not. Know. I mean, it, look, you're a gang member. I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it's not. As, as a former gang prosecutor, I can tell you, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. And, you know, right now they're having their staff talk to one another, and I think they've kind of agreed on certain short term fixes. Um, you know, possibly reclaiming some of the unspent money of the American Rescue Plan during uh, COVID. Basically, there's money out there that hasn't been spent. Do we claw that back? Okay. Um, things like that. And so I think they've kind of come to some parameters, but now the hard part is the details. Once you start drilling down into the details, it can be uh, pretty difficult. But that's, that's, what, they're, that's what we've got to do. Real quick, Neil, getting yeah. back to that kind of negotiation thing. The public generally all we see are these kind of uh, the, the bit more crazy Republicans in Congress. Sure. Tend to be on the news a lot. Sure. You know? Sure. Um, and yours, it, well, it's, it's, I guess, very nice to hear that there are people on that side that want to work with you. Of course. Of course. Of course. I mean, that's what it'll be to look. Good governing isn't sexy enough. It doesn't make the news that often. And you hear about, on both sides, on both sides, those on the extremes who are, I would say, more performative than legislative. And as you've heard me say this, and I said this to both of you, I'm not in the perform I'm not in the entertainment industry now. I'm in the legislation industry. Right. And I can tell you there are members on both sides of the aisle that are like that. And actually, one of the best parts about this job, the best part about this job is being able to serve this place that I call home. The second best part of the job is actually the people of in Washington, D.C., Democrats and Republicans. Really good people back there who want to represent their constituencies and they want to do that by actually working with people and talking to people and negotiating and finding our similarities and not just pointing out our differences. And I'm telling you, they're back there, and that's what makes the job fun. It's, it's interesting, too, because you don't always get that. No, you know, like I said, good governing isn't sexy. Yeah. You know, sausage making of, of government work is kind of boring. Well, that's and, like a boring movie, right? And, and, you know, it should be boring. It should be boring. It's kind of grinding hard work, but that's what it's about. But the problem is the TV pretty much likes the divisiveness you turn on Fox, you turn on MSNBC, and even CNN, you know, you're going to, you know, what sells? Right. Donald Trump, town hall for an hour, or, you know, you know what I mean? Kind of feeling back in Washington, though, as of, you know, uh, as of today. I mean, look, confident this, it, well, on the debt ceiling, I think it's uh, low confidence, right. low confidence at this point. Um, but at least they're talking, and I think that confidence is stemming from the fact that at least they're not talking arguing now. Talking. Yeah, no, 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 we're having conversations. Um, you know, I, I had the fortunate opportunity to travel with the Speaker of the House of Representatives last week overseas. Uh, we went on a bipartisan delegation that he led uh, to Israel, Jordan, and, uh, Egypt, and Italy. Uh, a wonderful trip uh, where we were able to basically talk about, you know, where he wanted to go. And I think, you know, his issue was, you know, there are any negotiations. And and I get it, the president's kind of was like, well, it's on you. Um, but to this point, especially what Secretary Yellen said, that we can't go past June 1st. If we don't, we're going to run out of money.